Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be talking about transport preferences in Cubase and in Pro Tools. Now Cubase is the DAW that I've been using the longest and it's also the DAW that I use the most as of this day. Uh, the DAW that I use the second most is Pro Tools. Now both of these DAWs are set and configured for the transport and the cursor and the screen movement to move in a certain way um, by default. I'm going to be talking about four different things that you can configure in Cubase that will make it more or less the way that Pro Tools is defaulted. So number one, in Cubase if you click on this section of the project and you hold down the the left mouse button and then you drag up or down, you can zoom in and out in the entire project. So this is quite handy for quickly accessing different areas of the, the project and zooming in and out very quickly. Um, Pro Tools is not defaulted for you to be able to zoom in and out with the mouse like that. Now in Cubase, you can go under File, Preferences, and in the Transport section, uh, and deselect this zoom while locating in time scale. This is going to disable that feature in Cubase. Number two, there's what's known as a start position for the cursor. So in Cubase, when you hit the, the, the play button, the cursor is going to move, and then when you hit the stop button, the cursor stops and stays um, where the cursor was when you hit the stop button. Um, if you hit the stop button a second time, the cursor moves back to that start position. So let me just demonstrate. Hit the play button. Hit the stop button. It stops. The cursor is there. You hit the stop button again, and the cursor moves back to the start position. This is set uh, by default for Cubase. In Pro Tools, when you hit the stop button the first time, the cursor moves back to that start position. That's the way that Pro Tools is defaulted. Uh, in Cubase, you can change that. You go under File Preferences and Transport. And if you select and enable this, return to start position on stop, it makes it so that the first time you hit the stop button, the cursor goes back to the start. Right there. Number three, the way that the cursor moves and the way that the screen moves in relation to the project being played uh, is going to be different by default for Cubase than it is for Pro Tools. In Cubase, the screen stays stationary and then the cursor moves from left to right. And when the cursor reaches the end of the screen, the screen jumps forward and then the cursor kind of moves along in that way. Uh, so just to demonstrate, the cursor moves along, when it reaches the end of the screen, it jumps forward. So that's that. The jumping forward motion is what's known as auto-scrolling in Cubase. So you can actually deactivate that auto-scrolling by pushing this button here and deactivating it in that way. Now when you hit the play button, it no longer does that jumping, scrolling motion. So that's really handy for editing. Now, Pro Tools, this cursor, like by default for Pro Tools, the cursor is always at the center, and then the whole screen moves from right to left in a nice, smooth scrolling motion. Now, you can set that to be the way, you can configure that in uh, Cubase here, if you go in File, Preferences, and under Transport, this section here, Stationary Cursors, when that's selected, the cursor is now always at dead center. When you hit the play button, the whole project moves and scrolls from right to left nice and smoothly. You can also use this auto scroll function and, disa and disable it uh, in Pro QAs here so that the screen will stay stationary. So again, no matter which way you configure the cursors to be, 
um, you can always use this disable function for the scrolling, which is great for editing. And number four, the last thing here. In Cubase, whenever you're clicking on empty spaces, it does nothing, unsurprising. Uh, when you click on events, it does things. You can do edits and whatnot. Um, but in Pro Tools, there's what's known as a multi-tool, where depending on where you are highlighted on the event, it will change the tool. And then when you click on that part, a certain area of the event, and you click on it, it will set the start location for the uh, for the locator or for the cursor. Um, it also does that whenever you're clicking in empty spaces for Pro Tools by default. Now in QAce, you can go under File, Preferences, and Transport. And if you select the Locate when clicked in empty spaces, it will do something very similar, where whenever you're clicking in an empty space, it's going to relocate the start position for the cursor. So that's kind of more like what Pro Tools does by default. So for me, I've, I've been using both DAWs a lot and I've gotten used to the way that both of them are set by default. And lately I've been configuring Cubase to be a little bit more like how Pro Tools reacts by default. So I've kind of made it like a best of both worlds kind of thing. And I'll show you here the way that I set it up. So I like to have this zoom function here disabled. I like that because I have a, a physical transport control here that's really easy. And I have manual control with my fingers. It's really quick and easy. Um, I don't like accidentally zooming in and out with my mouse when I'm trying to locate uh, with the mouse. So I take that off. Um, I do not like having only one option uh, for this here, for whenever I hit stop, I don't want it to always go back to that start position. I want to have the the cursor stop and stay wherever I stopped it, and then have the extra option to hit stop again and for it to go back to the start position. I like it like that. That's the way my mind works anyways. I'm used to it from Cubase, and I like having that extra feature. So I take this off. I leave it off as per default. Um, and then I do like the way that Pro Tools scrolls from right to left from by default. Um, I don't like the way that Cubase jumps around. I've been I've gotten used to it, but now that I've set it this way and tried it and made it more like Pro Tools, I've gotten used to this and I've liked it more. Because I can still use this uh, I can still deactivate the auto scroll for the screen to stay stationary when I'm editing. Um, but when I'm not editing, I like to have everything just move smoothly along and that way I don't, I don't lose my place whenever I'm looking at the screen at a certain part of the song. Uh, so I keep that checked. And lastly, I do not like having the locator move whenever I'm clicking in empty space. Um, the reason is because a lot of the times I'll have things highlighted and then I want to um, de-highlight or unhighlight those events, and I'll click an empty space to unhighlight, mm -hmm. then do uh, carry on my business. If I keep doing that, and then the locator moves, it's going to bug me. I hate it when the locator moves suddenly, when the zoom moves suddenly by accident, and when the screen jumps. Those are my preferences. That's the way that I I've learned to like my uh, my settings in Cubase and the way that I prefer seeing and the way that my mind works, the way that everything kind of just m works and moves um, smoothly like that. So yeah, hopefully uh, you guys liked this kind of a video. It's something that I've been thinking about lately and been trying to configure for the last couple months or so. I've now kind of figured out the way that I want to work with Cubase. And it's now also kind of a side note. It's also going to be more similar to the way that I work in Pro Tools. So I like having both the AWs react the same way. 
it's convenient for me and my, convenient for my brain. <laughs> I don't have to think uh, to the specific DAW, like how it's going to react differently. If they're both more similar, then uh, I don't have to think so much. Even though I like thinking, thinking is cool. <laughs> but yeah, anyways, hopefully you like that. Uh, leave a like if you did. Uh, even hit that subscribe button. You know that uh, subscription and stuff helps me helps me and my channel out, um, as does the likes. So uh, thanks, guys, for watching, and see you in the next one.